Welcome back everybody to another Tabletop Life video. I'm Jaime Paris and I am at the Beachhead Bro 2022 Major. I am in Bournemouth in the UK. I just got here. I uh, just went out to dinner with some friends. I am exhausted. I flew over today from Atlanta, had an overnight flight, landed, went home, repacked, grabbed a train and just came straight down to Bournemouth. I'm pretty jet lagged. Um, I thought about coming here. So this is a seven round major. There's four rounds tomorrow, three on Sunday. They offered us to play round one today, but I landed like four hours before the round started and in four hours of sleep, I didn't, I didn't think I was gonna cut it. So I decided to go for the four rounds tomorrow. So it's a very, very early start tomorrow and I'll be playing two games before lunch and then two games after lunch. So it's gonna be a long, long, very intense day. But I've got my Wolves, I'll go over my list tomorrow. I'm, I'm too tired to do it right now. It's sitting right in front of me and I don't wanna do it. I'm too tired. But I'm excited. Um, the terrain is not exactly what I planned for. It looks like there's a couple more windows that I was hoping for. But the event looks pretty cool. Um, all my friends played their first round today and they'll have great rounds. So we'll see how round one goes tomorrow. I'll try and film as much as possible. The rounds are pretty short. There are two hours 45 each with 15 minutes of uh, deployment and player placing terrain. It's the player uh, optimized terrain, just like FOG. So it's an hour and 15 per player. So I'm hoping to record as much and as many turns per game. But if I get my butt whooped, I might have to focus on the game as much as possible and capitalize on that time. But I will try and film as much as possible, obviously. Ooh, let's see how it goes. Tau made it into the cutoff, so Tau might be a problem. Crush is some Peter still running around, and Custodius, like, I mean, I designed the list to beat Custodius, right? So we're about to find out. My list is slightly different to my adapting to the meta video. I did a few test games with that list, and it was too overkill. I didn't have enough to play the mission against weaker armies. So Custodius, it looked great, but... I didn't have my scouts for engage and rod. I didn't have more units for holding objectives. It was full kill power. And that's not exactly my play style. So I dialed it down a little bit. I put in one year of scouts. Look at me talking about my list. Um, we'll cover it tomorrow in detail properly, but um, I'm very, very excited. Four rounds tomorrow. So we'll see how it goes. And make sure you like and subscribe. And yeah, let's see how much footage I get out this weekend. All right. All right, we just got here to the event. Uh, that's my opponent, Evan. We're just setting up. Everyone's checking in and getting all set up. Round starts shortly. Um, round one, I'm playing against Space Wolves in the mirror matchup. We're playing on the player place terrain, so that's what the terrain looks like. Um, really cool terrain on the inside, actually. That's really, really cool. This is 59, so this should be 60. This is 60. Yeah, it is. It's right over here under my box. No, no, it's right. Yeah. Thank you. Everybody. No worries. So, my list. Um, changed it up a little bit since, that, since last time. I've got my chapter master with hammer, melter, rights of war, and hunter. And obviously armor of rust. Then I've got my chaplain with mantra of strength this time, just going for that little extra damage. Ooh, see Daisy. Then I've got my troops. I've got a squad of incursors, squad of infiltrators, and a squad of assault intercessors. I've got my two wolf guard. One guy had to drop a shield because of points. I've got two wolfen just on the other list. I've got four eradicators, this time instead of three, just to see if that extra guy takes me over the breaking point to do some damage against the big bugs. I've got eliminators just so the more guys teeth well, I can get real ones to wound because I don't have a lieutenant in this list. I've got the six man long fang. I still have one scout squad for a little bit of mission play. But I start on seven command points, so one extra CP than the usual list. Let's see how it does. Uh, we have four rounds today and then three rounds tomorrow. So it's going to be a long, long day. The event space looks really, really cool. Um, it's actually really nice in here. It's not hot at all just yet. As soon, I'm guessing as soon as a bunch of bodies come in, there'll be some sweat. Um, but yeah, my voice is getting set up. So once we start playing, I'll start recording. And let's see how many games I actually remember to record. All right. All right, we are deployed for game one. So I've got my assault intercessors and scout over here, my wolf and wolf guard here in the middle with my characters, uh, infiltrators and the limiters forward deployed. I've got some incursors over there. I've got cyber behind that ruin, eradicators and another wolf and squad over here, and another little dog over here. And I'm missing one dog somewhere. 
One, two, and the third dog is over there. I've got a third dog right over there. And he's got a Razorback with Grey Hunters, Intercessors, Wolf Guard, uh, Captain, Thunder Wolf Cavalry, Battle Leader, Razorback, Outriders, Eliminators, and some troops over there with a the Librarian and a Dreadnought over there. So we get to do the runoff to see who goes first. You ready, Evan? All right, let's do it. I roll A. Six and a two, so successor space will go first. And yeah, so I'll declare my secondaries were Stranglehold Oath and Heroic Challenge. So my chapter master is going to issue the challenge. Who do you accept with? The Wolfguard Battle Leader accepts the challenge. Uh, his secondaries were uh, Banners, Engage, and the Space Wolf secondary to do the charges. What's it called? It's the one where you have to make two charges and you get three points. So his very aggressive army makes charges and plays how he wants to play and makes he gets points. So let's go into six Warrior Pride. There we go. Let's go into Successors turn one. All right, so Successors first turn, we moved up the entire army in a solid wall. Got Wolf and Wolf Guard in here with a Chapter Master. Dropout came down and nuked the Predator because I didn't want that thing running around. That Dreadnought is still there. I've got a Wolfen squad and incursors over there. So we're about to see what happens. We advanced over here. We killed one intercessor in shooting, which was cool. Everyone advanced. We got Stranglehold and we're on to Space Wolf's turn one. He's on 12 command points and he's about to go into his movement. So let's see what the Space Wolves do. We'll come back at the end of his turn. All right, so end of the Space Wolves turn one. The battle leader charged the Eliminators. I heroic with the Devastators. He shot the Devastators and killed a bunch with last cannons and bolters. I had to auto pass leadership. Uh, he did a wound to the Eliminators with the battle leader. I did a couple wounds back to him with the, with the Eliminators. Razorback popped my speeder and then the scouts died a miserable death to the Thunderwolf Cavalry. He consolidated into my chaplain and I got to hit him. So I killed one because I had Mantra Strength activated. And that is it. So let's go into Successor's turn two. Alright, so end of the Successor's turn two. What a mess up. The chapter master in a soul doctrine with full reels to hit and plus one to wound went into the battle leader and bounced off. And then he died to him fighting back with his dog. So that loses me the points for um, Heroic Challenge because I didn't kill him in combat with the guy that challenged him. So now I can only get 10 points for killing him in combat. And then over here, the wolf and picked up the Thunder Wolf Cavalry. Um, the chapter master whiffed and he just died like a sucker, proving who the true Space Wolves are. So right now he's doing his movement phase, he's moving up everyone ready to charge. And the Incept is going to come back here and kill this dog, which is not very nice. But yeah, we'll come back at the end of Space Wolves turn two. Alright, aggressive turn for the Space Wolves. They charged in, wiped the Wolfen, the Wolfen fighting on death, did not kill the, the captain. Um, his Saga of the Bear activated, so everyone has a 6 out Fionn up in here. Uh, they wiped the Assault Intercessors. Over here, the Wolf Guard heroic and killed the Lieutenant, the Battle Leader. And over there, uh, the Assault Intercessors killed half the Incursors and I killed Eddie back. And then these guys in the Assault Doctrine with plus one a wound killed three Eradicators. So let's go into Successors turn three. I'm now in the Assault Doctrine and let's try and do some damage because he has been a Aggressive. He is right on the line. He's got one squad all the way in the back over there. So I need to push or I'm in trouble. All right, let's go into Space Wolves uh, Successors turn three. All right, end of uh, Space Wolves Successors turn three. Wolf Guard and Chaplin charge into the um, into his infantry and the cha and the captain. Captain fall on death. Put my Chaplin on one wound. And my wolf guard died to all his fighting. We weren't able to wipe the units, so that was unfortunate. Over here, the wolf and, uh, wiped out the, the outriders and the eradicator shot the librarian dead. And the long fangs killed the interceptors that dropped over there and killed my dog. Over there, we're still stuck in combat. And he holds two objectives and he's got two banners down and that is it. So on to his turn three. Alright, so end of Space for Success is turn four. He had taken this objective from a cyber wolf and I moved the wolf guard the wrong way, so I had to charge over him to kill the intercessors to steal that objective for Strangle, because I should have moved.
jumped over here like a normal person. And then the wolf and killed the assault intercessors over there. So his wolf guard about to charge my wolf guard. And let's see what happens. Yeah. On to Space Wolf's turn four. All right, so we just finished the game. The game ended 95-80 for the successor wolves. Turns out successors are the true wolves. Um, we had a bloody, bloody game. His infantry was going right through me just because I couldn't kill him. Um, but eventually the Wolfen did tons of work. The Wolfen picked up loads of units. That strike 10 really hurt his T5 units. But a uh, very, very enjoyable game. Thanks for my opponent, Evan. We've got 10 minutes left in the round. Um, everyone's still in the middle of it. So we're going to wait for the pairings to get pushed. And we'll come back for game two. All right, we're into round two. Nice. So, um, game two into custodies. I was trying to avoid him, but here we are. <laughs> I'm playing against Anthony with his custodies. He's got uh, two three man squads of bikes. He's got the Terminator captain. He's got a captain on bike. He's got a Trajan. He's got two dreadnoughts. He's got some Sagittarius in the back. Um, we are playing conversion. I went first. So, all I did was engage with these guys. I rode with the incursors. Infiltrators and dog are touching the middle objective. And here we are, like he's going full aggro on me right now. He's uh, bringing the pain. We're about to see what damage Custodius can do. Slightly worried, but hey -oh, here we are. And we'll come back at the end. So my turn one, all I did was position, engage and rod an oath. And he's coming out with all his units. And yeah, we'll, he's gonna position a little better. He shouldn't be able to shoot too much. And then, yeah, we'll come in at the turn of uh, end of Custodius turn one. All right, so end of space was turns two. All we did was advance a dog over there. We bounced the incursors. Drop ball came down. We killed one bike. Full combo. Killed one bike. The Radicators did pop off and they killed the Custodius unit. That was very, very good. But yeah, we're now going into Custodius turn two. He is peeking out. Everything's coming out. So we're about to get some hurt. But let's see what they do. And we'll come back at the end of Custodius turn two. All right, quick recap. At the end of the Custodies, they destroyed my Dropple and my Devastators, completely wiped them up. Um, and they killed the Eradicators in combat, so he got 13 points on his custody secondary. Space Wolf's turn, we shot and charged the bikes that were over here, and we charged the bikes that were over here. We were able to kill both units, but this captain did his little teleport, and he failed to kill the Wolfen, so great, but like, <laughs> he's still a problem. We move block this Telemon over here. So we are about to find that these guys over here are in trouble, but let's come back at the end of Custodies. He's planted his second banner, and yeah, so so into turn three of Custodes. All right, so we just finished the game. The final score is 82 to 77 for the Space Wolves. Absolutely ridiculous game because there was one Dreadnought here, Dreadnought here that I could not kill and just kept on racking up points between grind and knocking me off objectives and scoring a whole more for him. Um, he got tons of points on banners because he had uh, two banners planted. But really, really good game. Amazing opponent, really, really fun. But uh, finally, I beat the Custodes. It's taken me like eight games <laughs> to beat them. Um, so in terms of points, I scored 12 on all my secondaries. I scored pretty low on Oath just because I went first. And then um, Rod, the scouts were able to pull it out, which was huge. And he was getting grind almost every turn. Actually, I did not a couple turns. Org Mortalis is such a good secondary. Just What's your best unit? It's dead. 13 points. Yeah, so super, super tight game, but very, very enjoyable. And now it's, uh, it's lunch break, so you get to have lunch, yeah. But that's my point, because that was an amazing game. All right, we're here at game three of the Beach and Super Major. Space was versus Good Stuff Jukari. This is a horde list, tons of bodies, like 17 points of no prison or something like ridiculous. And and uh, Space Wolves are going first. I've got my two Wolf and my Eradicators in here. I've got Wolf Guard and Sultan Cessors, Wolf Guard and Cursors and Speeder. And yeah, Space Wolves go first. So let's go into turn one. 
Alright, so Space Wolves wasted an entire turn killing stupid flocks. I had to fire all my eradicators, my melters, my pistols, my eliminators to kill one squad, and a wolfing squad didn't even kill a unit. So we didn't do too hot, but at least we're removing screens and we're scanning this objective again. We're still holding three. We've run in my two backfield objectives, and an incursor is still in, it went back into reserves. And that is it. So he now gets advanced in charge, so now he gets to go as far as he wants. But let's see what Jukari do in turn two. Alright, so we are at the bottom of turn three for Jukari. So Space was what we did is we're still holding the middle. We shot the eight-man um, racks that were left after the wolf and fall on death. With the Eradicator Scouts, I shot everything into him. I still had to fire one of the Devastators across to kill him. And then the wolf guard went and killed one of the two of the last racks and killed a couple of mandrakes. I, he screened me out really well with the incursions. I couldn't come in for Rod, so I'm currently on four Rod, but so is he. And he still has tons of bodies, right? Like I've done, killed, but he still has 30 Cabalites in those guys. He still has three characters. Like it's um, it's go time. We're about to see what Jukari do in turn two, the turn bottom of turn three. So we just had a great game against uh, Simon with his Jukari. Damn flocks. Those four wounds, guys. Um, the Wolfen were incredible in this matchup. Being able to trade for two units was, was brutal because he had to sacrifice two units at a time to deal with the Wolfen. But uh, that was a very enjoyable game. So awesome, thank you man. very, very, very much. Yeah. He's going to follow us. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're awesome. So that's cool. But yeah, that's three games. So we got one more to go. Yep. And then bed. We're going to finish like at 10 p.m., dude. Good to I know. I know. Okay. It's going to be a light one. I know. All right. All right, so we'll come back at the end of round four. Thanks, man. All right, we are here at round four of the Beachhead Brawl 2022 Major. I'm playing against Vic. He's a really well-known player here. He's destroyed Stormers every time he shows up. I've heard about him a lot, so a little nervous because he's playing Tau. We are playing um, Recover the Relics mission, so there's three objectives on each table half pretty much. Uh, he's playing his Tau, he's got two Crisis Bombs, he's got um, a Broadside Unit, he's got Ethereal, Shadow Sun, Commander, Commander in, a, in Enforcer Suit, he's got a couple Infantry Squads, he's got a Vesper Squad in Deep Strike. Um, he was already super kind enough to remind me that the, the Stealth Suits can redeploy forward, not like every other army where they have to deploy back into the point source, so he let me fix a mistake with the screen, that was very nice of him. Um, but yeah, he went first. I don't know if that's good or bad. I'm about to eat a bunch of turns of shooting. But let's find out what Tao do. I mean, we've seen it with Brad. We've seen the game, so this ain't gonna be pretty. I'll try and film, but uh, this is gonna be stressful. So we'll come back at the end of Tao turn one. All right, so end of the game, 95 to 72 for the Tao. That mistake over there was critical. Do not make a mistake like that because I put so much planning on where the terrain was gonna go and where the wolf guard were gonna end. And I had two squads of wolf guard here that were unshootable. And I left that squad. So all I had to do was move the erratic, the eliminators or the assault intercessors, like a unit, to stop that from happening. And that was a vital mistake that you cannot be making on the top table. So, AO lessons learned, on to the next one. Tomorrow there's three more games so I can still go six and one if I work hard. And yeah. I'll catch you later tonight. I have not tomorrow morning. If you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe. Make sure you follow us because uh, we do a lot of battle reports and a lot of competitive games, but we also show mistakes. Like this cost me the game. That was a super mistake. I'm a mistake. And he spotted it, right? Like these are the kind of, if you have an opportunity like this, you go for it. You cripple your opponent. There's nothing you can do. But yeah, absolute great game. Tower problem. I killed the commander. Moral victory, but uh, got my butt whooped. But yeah, let's see how tomorrow goes. All right, we are here at day two of the beachhead brawl. Um, just started round five. Yeah, because we played four yesterday. So it's round five against Necrons, against Dennis with his Necrons. He's got the uh, relentless, relentless expansionist and the obsec trait. He's got two units of uh, rays, a unit of destroyers, a unit of heavy destroyers, two doomsday arcs, one of those Tezzer arc arcs, a big squad of lich guards, some scarabs, and a few characters. We are playing on Data's Courage mission, no vital intelligence. And I took Strangle, I took Oath, and I took uh, R&D. And he took Engage, uh, Ancient Machineries, and no prisoners. So his two objectives are the ones over there, and this one over here. Um, this is what his side of the board looks like. Pretty brutal. And 
aggressive. He's already coming at me. He does not give a crap. So I've got two Wolfen squads over here, two Wolf Crush squads over there, Luminaires in the center. Those incursions, I was hoping to go first and do roll with them early, but he's just going for it. So sad, sad times. This is his pregame move plus his actual move. That's why he's going so far, because he, he's just doing it together to speed up the, the game. Yeah. What's your He's got plus one to move, so he's uh, up in my face. And yeah, I've got some infiltrators over here, just in case that goes wrong. He's got both Raytheons going that way. So let's see what Necrons do on their turn one, and we'll come back at the end of turn one. All right, we are in round six of the Beachhead Brawl 2022 Super Major. I'm playing against Jamie, one of the War Masters from London. One of the best teams in the world, apparently. Um, we're playing Custodies, we're playing on the, um, whatever the sixth objective mission is on Dawn of War, um, what's it called? Conviction. Tide of Conviction. So, very, very interesting. Um, I unfortunately went first. I took behind enemy lines just because the scouts could get it, which is cool. Um, then, um, I took Oath because Space Marines, and I took Rod, uh, R&D. And I wanted to go second because that helps me max out Oath, and it helps deny him grind because he took grind, he took engage, and he took, no, ban he took banners, grind, and psychic interrogation. That's right. So, right there. Yep. Absolutely. So, um, it's very interesting. Let's see what he does. Um, into Custodian Turn 1. All I did was just put the scouts, shot some uh, veterans, didn't kill them, but you know, one and a half, it's worth it. And we just moved up a little bit. I really wanted to go second here, but we'll make it work. We'll come back at the end of uh, Custodian Turn 1. All right, so end of Space Wolf Turn 3. The Custodians killed the incursors over there. And um, in my turn, Wolfen came out, Dropper came down, I tried to kill the guard, and the Wolfen tried to kill the Wardens, but unfortunately with Transhuman, no rerolls, and all those buffs, it's, it's really, really hard to kill him. Very unfortunate, but here we are. And we're about to go into Custodes' turn three. Yeah. So let's see what they do. Uh, right now, score-wise, we're super tight. Uh, but Custodes have the second, the going second advantage, so we're about to see what happens with them. So you're on eight command points or seven? Seven. Yeah. All right, and then I'm on five. So we will come back at the end of Custodes turn three. I've got Wolfen Squad, Wolf Guard, Wolf Guard here, Child the Masters all the way here with the Soul Intercessors. I've got Infiltrators in reserves, and he's got all his bias completely intact. So we're about to find out if he comes closer for me to charge next turn. But we'll come back at the end of Custodes turn three. All right, so we just finished the game. It was a brutal game, very, very close. Uh, the final score was 74-59. So really good game. I couldn't do enough damage. I bounced off a couple of Custodes, and then the Praetorium, he did a really good move with the Praetorium plate to stop my Assault Intercessors from denying him his banner on that objective over there. So he played super, super well. But we got one more game. We are currently four and two. Let's see if we can go five and two, and if not, we're gonna go home and chill and watch the movies, because seven games in two days is rough. We will play to my opponent. Good luck to him on the next round. We got one more round. I think everyone's exhausted. Just one more game, please, and then we're done. And then we'll, we'll I'll wrap it up later. But yeah, having a blast. This list is killer. I think I'm gonna make one change where I'm gonna make the Long Fangs the most expensive unit. Just because my opponent didn't go for the most expensive unit secondary for the Custodies, but right now the Eradicators are two points more expensive than the Long Fangs. So if I can make them three points more expensive, I'll drop a Melter somewhere. Um, that will make the most expensive, now I can drop him into the deployment zone, kill a unit, and deny them a bunch of points. Might not be worth it, but giving them 15 points on the Eradicators just for killing them is, is brutal. Yeah, but you do. Easy. Yeah, in other missions, it's, I'd rather you kill the Devastators that are dropping into your deployment zone and you only get hit points. But uh, I'll see how I can make that change to that list, but I wouldn't change anything about this list. It's working really well. It's giving me all the tools to outplay my opponents. I just got to keep pushing and make it work. So we'll go into the last game and we'll summarize that as much as possible. There's a wolf and squad there and a dog. 
All right, we are playing in the final round as given with his knights. A Magera and a ridiculous amount of baby knights. Um, it's never a number of rings, yeah. So, um, I deploy pretty safely with my Rikers and my Wolfen just because I want to die yet. They had to be sacrificed and they are chilling over there. But, oh my goodness, is this rough. We are about to see what knights can do. Because he's pure knights, every model counts as five, big one counts as ten, and all the little ones actually count as obsec, funny enough. So, pretty brutal. But, damn Wolfen. He sees one. He's getting around. Brutal, brutal. I like it. Very interesting. He's all over the place. He went first. I took Strangle, Oath, and Bring It Down. He took Grind, Assassinate, and the Night One, where, like, if I'm not in his deployments, it gets points. Um, so, pretty cool. But let's see what he does in his turn one. We'll come back in his turn one. All right, so the battery just died. We did a quick summary. I, whatever. He shot my chapter master. He rolled five sixes on the lightning locks. He's got 19 hits, wounding on threes. Didn't whiff, Kevin. So I'm taking 16 wounds and minus two. So this is a three up save because he's armor of rust. He's got two up armor in cover. I've got no CP to reroll. So here we go. On average, I take five. On average, he dies. See, one, two, three. <laughs> he survives! What a legend! The chapter master survives on two wounds. That was way above average. I'll take that. <laughs> that was funny. So we'll keep going with his turn three. Alright, go for it. Just go for it. Just go. Let's do it. So he got into range of my chapter master because I didn't scream properly. There's a point where he's one inch from all three. So he's about to rinse my chapter master again. Will I survive? I'm not in cover, so I get four up saves here. He rolls another four sixes. This is problematic, because these are lightning locks. These double explode on sixes. So he gets an additional six on top of the, what? Six, 12 shots that he pumps out? Okay, he's gonna wound me first. Yeah. Uh, he survived once, he will do it again. He's on two wounds. Seen four of saves. That's eight. That's six. Are you ready? Are you ready, Kevin? Four ups. No! Chapter Master dies. God damn it. Oh, by the way, Assault Intercessors charge in, left him on two wounds, and then they survived the punch back. So that's pretty good. But Chapter Master dies, he's out of there. All right, so I just got to Amsterdam with my cousin and I wanted to quickly summarize and recap the weekend at Beachhead. I ended up going five and two and ended up placing 18th. I was the second highest Space Marine player. There was a Death Watch player that came in fifth and he crushed it with Death Watch. So I was really, really happy how I ended up with the, with the list. The list itself worked great. I loved how the list worked. I'll definitely be doing a video on the list and how it works because it was a little different to what I'm used to. Um, I scrapped the entire idea that I came up with when I did the last uh, adapting to the meta because it was too overtuned to kill custodies and I was worried that I wasn't going to be able to play the mission too much. And the what I did was drop some of the kill power. I dropped one of the wolf guard squads and I put back one of the scout units in. So the full list, I'll, I'll definitely do a video reviewing it, but quickly it had the captain with armor of rust, it had the chaplain because I still need the plus two to charge. I found that uh, when I dropped the chaplain, I couldn't go for nine inch charges anymore. And nine inch charges, nine to ten inch charges are very common. Whereas that plus, two, that plus two charge is vital, especially to cross large uh, open fields, especially against gun lines like Tau. So that chaplain had to stay in, even though he's pretty expensive right now. Then I had uh, three troop choices. Two of them forward deploying and cursus infiltrators. That gave me tons of abilities to get a stranglehold pretty easily, especially when I can forward deploy a infiltrator squad on objective behind the wall. That was super, super useful. Then I had assault incestors just for backfield holding, 
The cool thing with having two forward deploys, or more importantly, one incursor and one infiltrator, two focus units, is that I can have one forward deploy do R&D or the new rod, and then I can bounce them to do it later turns. And having another scout squad, I now had multiple units that could bounce around and get me R&D. So most of my games, I was maxing out that secondary, which was super, super helpful. Another secondary that I once took was behind enemy lines between having the scouts get it turn one, and then if the spear doesn't get killed, they can get it turn two. The drop one comes in, that gets me four points. Honestly, like if I want my opponents to stay back, like Custodes, where they don't have many units, I actually took it against Custodes player where I wanted him to stay back. I knew that like if I could get my dogs up the board better, I could then advance them to get behind enemy lines. So honestly, a secondary worth considering. I then had... Um, two wolf guard, two wolf and the scouts, still with two melters, just because I've got the model like that, and it's pretty handy to get those extra two melter shots sometimes, even though some, most of the time I'm throwing them away for R&D or engage or behind enemy lines. Then I had the eradicators, a four man instead of a three man. The three man didn't feel like enough. That extra two shots, because they get to shoot twice, was very, very valuable in terms of trying to get past that breaking point where you can start doing real damage. Three, three whiff. Three is not good enough. Four seems to be the sweet spot. Ideally five, but that's a very expensive unit. And I don't have the points for that. Then I had the Devastators as always. Those worked great. They whiffed a lot. They kept failing to kill the targets. But the threat and the possibility of killing something, and then they have to be killed the next turn. I know what my opponent's going to try and kill next turn. And where their shots are going to be dedicated. That was actually very, very valuable. So as always, they did great. The three cybers were awesome. One of the things that one of the issues I had with the tournament was the player pack got changed a couple of times closer towards the tournament, and I think once during the tournament, um, it was all player place terrain, and the only rule was that you could only place you had to place all your runes six inches apart and four inches off the table edge. A new rule got added halfway through or early in the tournament where you couldn't put place a ruin four inches. You have to place all your runes four inches off the center. So that meant that the center objective was always completely exposed. Now for Oath of Moment, if I put a rune right off the four inches, a base that's less than two inches will still get me Oath, like a Cyberwolf. But there's no way for me to hold the middle objective and um, score Strangle and not lose the unit that I put on there. So that hurt my list because I've got no durability. I've got no units that can hold that objective through a, shooting, a turn of my opponent's shooting. So that really sucked. But overall, I was able to do Strangle, Rod, and either Oath or Oath. Oath and Strangle were the two I always took. Unless there was a mission where I couldn't do it. And then I tried doing Mihan and Reliance, which was very useful. But then, the best part of the list was the Eliminators. The Eliminators with the last Fusos and the Morkai Teeth Bolt on the Sergeant worked great. The ability to shoot at a target, get real ones to wound for my entire army for the rest of that turn meant that my Devastators could kill something more efficiently. I didn't have to get my Lieutenant um, in range, so that gave me more flexibility of placement. And then my Eradicators, if they're next to the Eliminators, they got really, really good efficiency out of it. I could bait out the no reroll stratagem from the custodies and then the wolfen. Because they're not core, they normally don't benefit from lieutenants, but more cat teeth but lets them reroll once the wound. And that meant that they normally, normally, never miss. They did bounce off a custodies unit like a really bad, but that was because no rerolls in transhuman. But by being able to do strength 10 plus one wound, reroll once the wound, they they pretty much wipe anything, which is pretty nuts to have them in there. Um, the extra mortal wound was nice. The last fusils did significant chip damage over and over and over again. Because they're hitting on threes because they have a ballistic skill of two plus. So they hit on threes running once for the captain or rerolling full rerolls if I give them chat to master rerolls. Then you shoot the Morkai teeth bolt first. It hits. They take a mortal wound and then your strength eight on the last fusils. AP three, three damage. That's up to seven damage. And then they fire and fade, right? So I was never trading that unit. So I was incredibly useful to maintain and sustain the damage output of my list throughout the games. So the list worked great, and I'm not gonna change anything from that list. I played seven games with the list, and nothing to change. There's a very small tweak where the Eradicators are two points more expensive than my Long Fangs. So the Custodi Secondary, where it's a kill your most expensive unit, that's my Eradicators. 
and it would be cool for it to be the, the long fang so I can bring the drop in the deployment zone. That's minus five points because they get five points for killing the unit, five points for killing it in combat, and five points if they kill it six inches outside of the deployment zone. So if I can bring it into the deployment zone, they lose those five points. If they kill a, a custodian's unit, it's minus two points per kill. So maybe I can do minus seven points, but that would it's finding those two points is gonna be impossible unless I'm dropping a melter somewhere. So I'm, I'll just keep it as the eradicators. I'll outflank them or I'll put them all the way in my backfield and I'll see if I can stop the custodian's player from killing them. Because that's 15 points if they don't kill that unit. So nothing to change about the list. My next tournament is a team tournament in Spain in Valencia. I'm going with some of the Spanish guys. So I'm very, very excited because that's my first team tournament with them. I'm, I love team tournaments as, as you've heard before in m multiple videos. It's, it's one of the best ways to play 40k. So we'll do... I'll definitely record as many games as possible. I'll try and record some of the pairings. Um, it'll be a little more stressful just because first time playing with them, I'm gonna try and perform as well as I can, try and impress these guys. But we will definitely get some content from that from that weekend. And let me know if there's anything specific you wanna see from a team tournament down in the comments. And make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.